The raw wool before going to dyeing, it is put into a cage and stamped using a machine which compresses the wool down while water flows in through the wool at the same time. This gives the yard a better velocity. It makes it easier for the dye to run through more evenly and more consistently. And once this is done, it is ready for the dyeing process. Dyeing the wool is a very important process which determines the final colour of our product. Our product has many different ingredients. Each ingredient will be a different colour. Our dyeing process will dye each individual colour separately. And then these colours will all come together to form the final product. Um, our dyeing process is very is a very strict process because we care a lot about the environment. So we use we use acid but it is within the standards that meet the regulations to comply with environmental standards. After dyeing then we have to dry the wool in order for it to be blended which will follow the next stage. The wool is put into a, a conveyor which will bring the wool up to a roller which will squeeze, press as much as the water content, moisture out of it before it goes into a large oven which will dry the wool. The temperature in this is a selector temperature which will not burn the wool. Blending is the process where we mix all the different ingredients, different colours together to form the final product. Here Seamus and Jared will put all the colours together, all ingredients together that form the final product. These are all mixed in different bins. They are put through a machine which adds oil to the fibre, which is very important for the next process which is carding because it takes away the static which makes it easier to card. Blending puts all the wool into a bale and the bale then is taking on a lift upstairs to the carding room. Bales are taking up from blending. They are put into a hopper at the back of the carding machine. The wool then goes from the hopper right through to the condenser, but it passes through different stages in the carding machine. You have the scribbler, which has a number of rollers, swifts, and doffs, and workers. These break down the wool, they continuously spinning around at a certain speed, they're pulling the fibres apart, working them more until we, which has an effect on the final thread coming off the machine onto a bobbing. Now it is important that the weight at the hopper at the back of the carrying machine is correct. The wool needs to be fed in at a consistent rate which is very important in determining the quality of our final thread. And carding will be considered the most important process in our factory. We're a very unique mill here, which is situated in southwest Donegal. It remains one of the only mills now in this region, in Ireland. We start, it's, the company started back in the 70s where they produced mainly cottage yarns for spinning for industries to produce the one garment whereas now we're at a stage where we produce many different products many different types of wool to meet the demands of an international market compared to years ago it was mainly the Irish market that we supplied 
but due to the demand for our product and the uniqueness of our product, mainly the Soft Donegal product, which now we sell to a number of different countries. The wool at the back of the hopper is still in a fleece-like form. When it travels through the machine, it forms onto a thread, which is spun or put onto bobbins, which are ready for the next process, which is spinning. The thread is still very weak at this point, but it will spinning will add the twist and strength into it. We have a team here mainly Nora and Chris who come together and they form the final shade colour that the customer would like in their finished garment. Um, they come up with a mixture of different colours by a padding process and different dyes from our palette and then in turn they will mix these together and it will form the ingredients for the final shade. Spinning is a process where after carding it will add a twist into the yarn to give it that strength and velocity and a good basis which will really determine our final product. Depending on the quality of the yarn, the tex or the count, there's different settings on the spinning machines. For example, the finer yarn or 165 tex would be have a 6 to 7 TPI which is TPI stands for turns per inch and this would, our finer wools would have a lot more twist than our coarser or heavier wools which would be our coarser wools would be spun double slub they'd be our iron tweeds or kilkara tweeds compared to our finer wools would be spun in single ends and after spinning these yarns can take different forms to finish it in order to meet the customer's needs. There's another process which involves washing the yarn. This is where the customer requires the yarn to be washed, which is mainly the oil being taken out of the yarn. And this is where they can knit their garments then and it is finished. They don't need to wash the garment themselves after working on it. The yarn after spinning is taken to a machine called a hanker, which makes small oval like shapes in order to work through the scouring bath. Four different baths. There will be two of the baths heated up to a certain temperature. There will be 40 litres of soap added to these baths. The yarn will run through them and will be taken out and it will be put on hangers for drying. The drying process takes 26 hours, which is 16 hours of drying and 10 hours of cooling. After the drying process, the yarn is taken out. It is taken off the hangers and put into bins, ready for the next stage, which is 
on the gill bus machine which simply winds the yarn onto a 2 kilo cone and put into a plastic bag because the yarn is clean now and we put covers over it to keep it clean for the customer. We get our wools from many different countries. We get our merino from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and this is mainly used in our softening oil product. This would be one of the highest quality wools we would use, and very popular also. Um, the reason for its high quality would be down to the, the warm climate that the animal grazes in, the breeding, and so on. We would have our coarser wools then would come from Norway, be a Norwegian, N17 we would call it. Um, we'd have an Irish wool here, they'd be coarser and they'd be due to the climate that this animal would breed in also. So altogether there's a, a range of many different types of wools. The, the highest quality wool that we'd use here, we'd, we'd use a small percentage of it, is cashmere. And this comes from mainly Iran or Mongolia. After spinning, if the customer wishes to buy our yarn or product in oil, this is where they will knit their garments and wash the garments themselves. If they're buying it in oil, it can go to twisting, where they will require two ends to be twisted together, which gives a nice chunky effect. Or else, the yarn can go to the autoclave or the steaming machine which is left in for an hour. This basically deadens the yarn and makes it easier for the weaver or the knitter to work with the yarn. It takes the life out of it and then this goes to the coning where the yarn is simply wound onto a cone and packed into boxes ready for the weaver or knitters 